This is the Soval SVO4. It's a dual independent extruder or IDEX 3D printer and comes in at 499 US dollars. With two direct drive extruders, I was super excited to review this machine given all the different use cases. Let's go over the basics of this printer. Its build volume is 300 by 300 on the X and Y and 400 on the Z, similar to the traditional CR10 build volume. It has auto bed leveling via a touch probe, uses a Creality 32-bit silent board, has a 4.3-inch touchscreen, it has two filament runout sensors, dual Z-axis lead screws, flexible build plate, full-size SD card, and belt tensioners on the X and Y axis. One of the biggest issues with IDEX machines is keeping the two nozzles on the different print heads at the same layer height. Soval has dealt with this by having the second print head on a movable plate that can be adjusted with this knob here, and then locked in with four set screws. After setting the machine up, I wanted to jump right into testing. Soval has a reskinned version of Cura that has all the different print settings for each mode baked in. There's a mirror mode, a duplicate mode, a dual material mode, and a single material mode. Just make sure the printer itself is in the mode that matches whatever profile you use for slicing, or things can get a little weird. I won't focus on mirror or duplicate mode as those just print the same model at once using both heads. Let's try a dual color PLA print to start. First print up is this dual color lizard. After I started the print, I noticed that the two colors weren't aligned and that one color was slightly closer to the bed. So I measured the offset and entered that into the second extruder offset menu. I also raised the second extruder by about an eighth of a turn. I restarted the print and after it finished I noticed two things. The alignment was slightly off and the second extruder was so close to the bed that it didn't deposit the first layer. The model printed well aside from some stringing and a failed support which held up this arm but after some cleanup it's not terribly bad. Next I ran the calibrations again and validated them using a much smaller model which I should have done to begin with. These calibration prints help to pinpoint the exact offset you need for your second extruder. I validated the tuning using this Omnom model. I also made sure to turn on the priming tower as it's not on by default in the Kira profile. The resulting model has great surface finish and thanks to the independent extruders there's no color bleed, but having only two extruders means I couldn't add a third color for the pupil. Next I printed this Warcraft Hearthstone. There's a bit of weirdness to the blue part here, which is a result of the second color not being thick enough in the model, but otherwise it's a pretty good print. Next I wanted to try two different materials, so I tried PLA and PVA soluble support interface material. I loaded up this plane sphere just to check my settings, and during the print I noticed the machine pausing in between layers, causing these weird surface blobs. I really have no idea what's going on here. It might be some rogue g-code between layers? But once the print finished, I tossed it in my Zortrax PVA dissolving machine, and after cleaning, this is the top layer, and these are the bottom layers. And again, here are those weird blobs from the machine pausing. I wanted to try a complex model, so I loaded up this xenomorph using soluble interface layers. Halfway through the print, my prime tower failed, and this led to some filament being extruded into midair and then dragged back into the print but I was able to remove most of that by hand. 
Since this was slightly too big to fit in my PVA washing station, I opted to let it sit in a container instead. This worked pretty good, turning most of the PVA into a slime that released easily, but since I was so aggressive with the support structure, this model was encased in non-dissolvable support. So it was still a huge pain to remove. Once it was cleaned up, the results were pretty underwhelming. I was hoping to see better detail when printing at the 0.15mm layer height preset. Okay, time to talk about the things I don't like about this printer. The Soval Slicer needs some work. I've used a lot of slicers over the years, and I even daily drove Kira for a while back in 2015. I know a lot of people like it, but I find it pretty clunky to use, especially when it comes to using two extruders and different materials. If you end up with this machine, definitely think about setting up a profile in Prusa Slicer or one of its popular derivatives like Super Slicer. If you're buying this machine to print two color models, be aware that there's not a whole lot of them out there. There's a handful of really good dual color models, but the majority of them can be printed in two parts on a standard single extruder machine anyway. And since the Soval Kira doesn't have a color paint option like the Bamboo Slicer, your options here are really limited. One final thing I didn't like about this machine was the fact that it doesn't have Z end stops. It uses the BL touch to home the Z axis and also to level the gantry to the bed. When it comes to first layer calibration, you need to level the gantry to the bed, then level the bed manually, then adjust your second extruder Z height, and then run a mesh bed level. This is just simply too much work for a first time printer buyer. And even as someone who's built and tuned a few dozen printers, I found this extremely frustrating. It could be simplified by using two end stops in relation to the two Z axes to level the gantry every time. There's no doubt in my mind that this machine could produce some good quality prints given enough tuning, but out of the box using the Soval Slicer, the print quality is quite unimpressive. That's all for today. Big thanks to Soval for sending this machine in exchange for an honest review. As always, thanks for watching and happy printing.